David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. One of the things I enjoy about having this channel is that I'm given the opportunity to check out a variety of pens that I wouldn't otherwise have been able to take a closer look at outside of uh, you know visiting a retailer or attending a pen show, and who knows when pen shows will happen again. My prediction is that 2021 will be a wash and that we might be getting back to normal in regard to attending larger public events in 2022. Uh, it'll take about half the year for everyone to get vaccinated and another six months or so for everything to simmer down, hopefully. Uh, that's not based on anything other than my own personal feelings, but we'll see. Who knows? I hope I'm wrong and things improve quickly. Uh, I am very thankful for my current situation, Things are good at work. I am very fortunate enough to be able to work from home uh, and the family is healthy and we're doing everything within our ability to stay that way. Um, we have some at-risk folks in the house, so that requires us to be exceedingly cautious. I hope that you and your family are staying safe and healthy as well. Okay, I have two pens for you today from SD Tupont. And those would be the latest additions to their sword collection, which are the Palladium version, as well as the Hippocrates, uh, which is a pen that is dedicated to medical professionals as well as healthcare providers. Uh, what I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of these two similar pens, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about them. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Uh, thanks go out to Coles of London, the U.S. distributor for SD DuPont, for providing these pens on loan for review. Uh, it arrives in this black box, and the inside there is a pen. Now, I do have two of these. Uh, this one here is the Hippocrates, and here is the Palladium. And here you can see a close-up of the two pens, seeing that the palladium version it has some palladium trim, uh, and there's a little bit more going on in this Hippocrates version, so that's the one we're going to be taking a closer look at. Uh, but I'll give you a closer look at the palladium version during the size comparisons. So, here is the Hippocrates. Uh, as mentioned, it's dedicated to medical professionals and healthcare providers. Uh, the pen is made from solid brass with a natural black lacquer, and the trim is gold-plated. Um, this is a V-shaped pen, where the thickest portion of the pen is at the top of the cap, and it tapers down to the thinnest part at the end of the barrel. I wouldn't describe it as a drastic V, though. Uh, let's take a look at the cap. The end is rounded, and it has a circular lacquered insert. Then, encircling the top of the cap is the name of Hippocrates in Greek. Uh, Hippocrates is also often referred to as the father of medicine. He founded the Hippocratic School of Medicine and helped establish medicine as a profession. Prior to then, it was lumped in with things like philosophy and rituals. Uh, the Hippocratic Oath, which is a text attributed to Hippocrates, but uh, there's actually some doubt if he was the one who actually wrote it, uh, is regularly taken today by medical graduates. Uh, then we have the articulated clip, which is in the shape of a sword. Uh, the sword is in reference to the famous quote from Edward Bulwer Lytton, uh, the pen is mightier than the sword. Uh, Lytton also was the gentleman who began one of his novels with the infamous words, it was a dark and stormy night. I really like that this D also serves as the hilt of the sword with the cursive elements representing Aquilion and guard on this diamond-shaped double-edged sword. Under this clip is the Rod of Asclepius. Now, there are actually two different symbols that you might see associated with the field of medicine. On the left here is the Rod of Asclepius, and then on the right you have the Cadaceus. I hope I'm pronouncing both of those right. Uh, while explaining the origins and meanings of each of these symbols would take way too long for a pen review video, suffice to say, according to the majority of the folks in the medical field, the rod of Asclepius is the correct one to use when referring to medicine and those in the healthcare field. So it's nice that SD DuPont got the symbolism correct on this pen. Uh, there is a smooth transition from the cap to the band, which is located on the barrel. Uh, the band is engraved with SD DuPont and then Paris. And there is a leaf symbol, which represents the use of Chinese lacquer in this pen. 
The barrel tapers down at a consistent angle, and then on the end we have a gold-plated piece with a very slightly rounded end. The cap easily snaps off. Now, when capping the pen, the sound is intentionally a bit loud. The marketing for the pen says that it's meant to imitate the iconic ping of opening up an SD DuPont lighter. Uh, while that sounds nice in concept, I don't feel the sounds match that much. Uh, the sound of the lighter has a very distinctive sound with a bit of resonance, as opposed to the sound of this cap. Now, I'm not sure how they could achieve that resonance in a cap, but uh, that would be a cool capping noise to have. Once you have removed this cap, you are greeted with this 14 karat gold nib. The nib is available in extra fine, fine, medium, and broad. I like the SD DuPont nib design. I feel it looks rather simple, but classy and elegant. And here's a look at the plastic feed. The gold-plated metal section begins with a steep flare. The section is angled, but not too drastically. Uh, even though I'm not the biggest fan of metal sections, I do find this one works well. Between the shallow angle and the prominent flare, I can easily hold on to this pen without my grip slipping or moving around too much. Then there is a fairly steep angled step up to the rest of the barrel. I find this pen to be long enough to use unposted. The cap does snap to post, and it does snap to post very securely and satisfyingly. However, the cap is essentially equal in weight to the rest of the pen, so I do find posting backweights the pen, throwing off the balance a little bit. So I personally prefer to use this pen unposted. This is a cartridge converter pen. It utilizes standard international cartridges and a converter is included. Uh, with the metal interior of this barrel and the metal parts of the section, eye dropping this pen would not be advisable. Now, I did ask two friends of mine who are doctors if people in the healthcare field liked owning things like this with medical symbols on them, or if they felt they were a bit cliche. And both of them answered that in the hospitals they work in, the personnel really kind of shy away from things like this and do feel it's a bit cliche. Um, it's something like this which tends to be gifted to them rather than something that they would go out and purchase for themselves. Now, my survey of only two people by no means is scientific, uh, and that doesn't mean that all medical professionals feel that way, but I thought that that was an interesting amount of feedback that I received from them. The SD DuPont Sword Collection retails for $795. At authorized dealers, you will find this pen for about 20% less, bringing the price down to $636, which is a fair amount for a pen. I will say that SD DuPont has impressed me as a luxury brand as I see more of their pens. Uh, their pens are extremely well crafted. They feel like luxury items, which is a good thing, especially for pens in this price range. Uh, and I have been very impressed with the quality of the nibs on each of the SD DuPont pens that I've tested. Uh, they are very high quality and provide a superior writing performance. And as you'll see here in a moment in the writing sample, the medium nib on this pen is rather generous, uh, and it's something I care for a great deal. So now it is time for some measurements, size comparison, and the aforementioned writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the SD DuPont Swords. Uh, to begin with, I wanted to show you both of them together again. The one on top of the Hippocrates, and then the one here on the bottom is the Palladium. Uh, I think there's some really nice detail on this snake on the Hippocrates, uh, and then I think that the, uh, the Palladium one looks classy as well. Uh, I personally typically prefer the silver colored trim over uh, gold colored trim, but uh, I think that they both look nice. And in regard to some size comparisons, uh, here it is with a Pilot Custom 845 and a Pelican M805 and also with a Mont Blanc 146. And for some other comparisons, I have three pens that are in my personal collection that I have yet to review. Um, and that would be the Nakaya Decapod Twist and then a Delta Stantufo Oro, and then also a Visconti Ripple. 
Now, you know, like I said, these are ones in my personal collection that I haven't gotten around to reviewing yet. Uh, maybe in the comments below, you can let me know which of those three you would like to see uh, reviewed sometime in the near future. In regard to some uncapped comparisons, uh, here it is with the Visconti Ripple and the Pelican M805 and the Mont Blanc 146. So here we go with the writing sample for the SD DuPont. This is the sword. And this particular one is the Hippocrates. This is a medium 14 karat gold nib. And the ink that I'm using today is Levenger Pomegranate. This is what the ink looks like. Uh, it is very pomegranate-y, kind of a, a dark kind of cherry red. Uh, this is what it looks like in comparison to Private Reserve Black Cherry, uh, as well as Diamine Oxblood. Uh, these are the bottles uh, that uh, Levenger does have a, a number of really solid colors and some nice inks. Uh, and plus, I think the, the bottles are rather unique and look kind of cool. Okay, here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Um, you can see that this medium nib is very generous. Um, it is a bit of a gusher. You can get a solid amount of line variation out of here. And even with little pressure, it's a decent amount of ink that comes out. The ink flow is no issue on this particular pen. In regard to reverse writing, It's just slightly scratchy, but it does lay down a nice fine line. In regard to some fast writing, the feed has no issues in keeping up. So here we have the SD DuPont Sword Collection, or the latest two additions to the Sword Collection. Um, as I mentioned, uh, SD DuPont has really impressed me with the performance and the quality of the pens that I've tested for them. It's uh, a brand that I hadn't thought much of uh, and don't have one in my collection, but I think that might need to change sometime in the near future. I've uh, enjoyed each of the ones that I've tested. So until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.